Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Now, how would you sum up Aviva's performance this quarter? Well, it's good to see you again, Simon. You know, it takes time to wake a sleeping giant. This quarter, we've hit all our key metrics. We've made the big progress, I think, in selling the US sale. Completing that was pretty core to what we did for the year. And uh, so we're making some progress. What I can say, though, there's no room for complacency. There's certainly no room for arrogance, but I think there is some room for optimism. In particular, how are you doing against your £400 million cost-saving target? Our cost-saving target, the £400 million, we are on target. We will hit our run rate by the end of this year. Um, that translates to uh, a little over 10% reduction from our 2011 baseline. Now, this has taken a lot of work throughout all our countries. Uh, all of our countries are now on track and all of our units are now on track. Uh, but there's still some execution that we need to complete before the end of this year. Now, cash flow is quite clearly the key priority. So how would you say Aviva is performing on this front? Well, Simon, when you have a cash flow plus growth thesis, cash flow is obviously a core focus of the group, and it certainly remains so. Now, we don't update on cash flow per se each quarter. But what we do do is update on OCG. That's the capital surplus we generate in the quarter. Now, our OCG is £1.3 billion. That's steady at that level. Uh, but the market won't know really the detail of how much we can get up to the group from the subsidiaries, how much we can get in our cash flow. Won't know that till the end of the year. What is core, though, is that we must improve the 48% remittance ratio we had last year and get that up more this year. Of course, our medium-term target in the next few years would like to take that from 48% to into the 80s, and that's what we're focusing on. So, Mark, what about the growth part of your investment thesis? Well, as you know, one of the key measures of growth is value of new business. That's the value of those new sales. And, and I think that's a good proxy for future cash flow. Now, perhaps the results in this quarter are a little bit ahead of uh, my expectations, but uh, we need to show continued and sustained growth over long periods here. Of particular note in the quarter, I think France was uh, strong at uh, 33%. Uh, Poland was 48%, and that's a, a quite good progress, particularly from the first quarter. Um, you had Asia at 43%, and also Turkey was over 40% as well. So uh, that's a very satisfactory performance from our growth markets. Now, in aggregate, in the year to date, our growth markets have made up 22% of our entire value of new business. And again, that's a, a very satisfactory outcome towards the growth part of our thesis. However, our turnaround markets uh, still are not anywhere near the, where they need to be. And in fact, we're a drag on that value of new business. So we have some work to do. Let's talk about the GI business. What would you want to say about that? Well, it's been an interesting period for GI, hasn't it? Uh, we've had, obviously, the floods in this quarter in uh, Toronto. And the last few weeks, in fact, we've had some uh, you know, fairly significant storms here in the UK. And I'm delighted with the way the teams work through these. We had the buses out, we had the assessors out, we had our claims people out talking to our customers. And we've been able to process these claims very quickly. You know, that's what we're here to do. And then the obvious question is, how did that impact our financial results? And we measure that, obviously, with our core, our combined ratio. And our core's been stable for the quarter at uh, a bit over 96%. I can tell you the storms, both in the recent weeks and in uh, Canada, uh, they were well within our catastrophe budgeting, well within our events, and uh, so there hasn't actually been that much impact. And I guess this is due to two reasons. The first is we're a diversified group, and this is one of the benefits. So when you have CAT events or other events, when you're diversified across territories, that certainly helps you. And secondly, we're starting to see real benefits from our predictive analytics in, in our underwriting. I think this is an area where we are a market leader. I think this is an area that will impact our business continuing going forward. And it allows us to rate our risks appropriately. 
And you've made some appointments too. You know, one of the keys to our success and future success is getting the right people in the right jobs at the right time. And moving Morris, who was the head of our highly successful Canadian business, to the UK, which is our largest GI business, is a pretty important move. And replacing him with Greg Somerville in the Canadian business shows the depth of our, that team. Um, moving these people is key, and developing the teams under these key leaders is also important. And Mark, what about the group's capital position? So I'm in the economic capital position, our capital surplus has been a key focus for the group and the board uh, last year and this year. Now at the end of 2012, our economic capital surplus stood at £5.3 billion. Pounds. Now at the interims, at the half year this year, that went up to £7.6 billion. Pounds. But of course, that was on a pro forma basis. And now we stand with an economic capital surplus at eight billion pounds. Now this has had very little to do with the market. It, it's almost um, exclusively through actions and management actions that have been taken. The sort of actions this includes is the sale, the completion of the sale of the US. Of course, Spain contributed with the uh, resolution of the uh, issues with the bank here and the, and the Azaval deal, uh, that contributed. Other disposals have contributed to that as well, and all the other restructuring and management actions that have been taken. I should also add that there's been extra prudence built into that. So at the £8 billion, that's a much more adequate figure. And finally, Mark, what is your outlook for the business? Well, Simon, I'm a believer that if you want long-term outcomes, there's no quick fixes. But I am pleased with the progress that our people are making. We've made a start, but it's only a start, and there's a great deal more that we need to do. That's going to be our focus. Mark, it's always good to hear directly from you. Thank you for sharing your insight with us. Thank you, Simon.